Hey Dominic, thank you so much for coming on uh, the podcast. I really appreciate it, man. I'm really happy you're here today. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, man. Like I said, you're lucky I like you. <laughs> Thanks, man. So tell everyone about yourself, you know, who you are and how you got started in real estate. Oh, man. Uh, so I keep a long story short. Basically, I was on the physical therapy track in college a couple of years ago, not long ago. I'm 22 now. So let's see. Go back to when I was 19. So three and a half years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I was working at a physical therapy place. I live in um, I live in up, I live in uh, New York, Long Island. So like New York City area. Nice. And uh, I went to uh, upstate New York for college. It was like a five hour drive. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was there, COVID kind of happened and it kind of drove yeah. me to um, kind of drove me to real estate. So what happened was actually the summer before COVID, I worked for a guy. And I was moving furniture and stuff for him because it was, you know, easy cash. Um, when I went to college, I ended up getting my real estate license. He, the guy convinced me to get my real estate license. And I said, hey, you know, uh, you know, COVID happened and I was out of work because of, you know, COVID. Yeah. So I, I got my real estate license. And when college opened back up, I would basically drive back and forth to college five hours each way every weekend to go to open houses pretty oh, much. Man. Um, and it was, it was an experience. But um, during that time, I read a book by uh, Brandon Turner called uh, how to invest in real estate. And you nice. can interrupt me at any time. Oh, okay. Uh, how to invest in real estate by Brandon Turner. And I was like, dude, I should start buying some of this. This is awesome, but it doesn't seem attainable at all. Um, so when I was driving back and forth, I would listen to Bigger Pockets podcasts. Yeah. Five hours each way is a long time. That's 10 hours of driving a week. That's like five podcasts. Um, and I listened to uh, when Pace went on in October of 2021, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I jumped on and um, I was listening to his podcast and I was like, oh, my God, this is how I do it. This is how I buy real estate. And uh uh, it was the craziest epiphany ever. And um, so a few months went by after that, and I continued to do the the realtor thing. And then eventually I kind of I said, you know, I, I got to make the jump. I got to jump into it. Um, I joined Sub2 in March of 2022. Uh, I tried to wholesale for a bit. Didn't really make any money. Didn't do much of anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was door dashing for a while because I didn't really know what else to do. Um I, I, I hired some VAs, some virtual assistants uh, with some credit cards that I took out. Um, I put a deal on a contract. I thought I was going to make 30 grand. Three months later, I made two. It barely covered. It didn't even cover any money that I spent. Why? What happened on that deal? It was just a cash deal and it just wasn't a good one. And I thought it was because I didn't know any better. And I just locked it up because like the prospects of locking up a deal were really like exciting. Yeah. Um. So I did. And it didn't go well. And basically I fired my VA and I was like, you know what? At that time I met my partners now, uh, Nick and Mike, because of that deal, I met them. Uh, and we started to put our heads together and try to do some Morby method stuff. Oh, and okay. um, basically, you know, just to not get into all of it right now, the weeds of Morby method, basically what it is, is you get a, uh, a bank to give you, let's say 70% of the loan to value. You get a transactional lender to fund, you know, the other 30%. And then, you know, the seller finances that 30%. Super complicated, much more complicated than it sounds. At first, I thought it didn't sound super complicated. We can get into it another time. Man, what a shit show. I'm sorry yeah, about really? that. Really? Oh, brutal. Um, we tried to do, I think, three deals. Two of them blew up in our faces. Um, I had one. I think we lost like 15 grand. And then I had one that actually closed. And it was an a 18-unit portfolio in Victoria, Texas. So at that time, when that closed, I had acquired my first sub-2 deal in Des Moines, Iowa, or just outside of Des Moines, Iowa, mm-hmm. Grinnell, Iowa. Um, so I acquired that sub two it was, you know, 5k down 5k assignment, no cash to the seller. I think, um, crazy deal. We ended up, we ended up putting 20 grand to work into that deal. So that all kind of happened at the same time where I closed on my first Morby method deal. 
and uh, I uh, I closed on that Grinnell Iowa deal, and all of a sudden I had a 19 unit portfolio. Um, That's a huge jump, man! Going from literally zero to 19 units, and at the same time you were wholesaling another deal, but then. I guess you, you're also investing for yourself, right? Because the, the at, years... at that time, I wasn't wholesaling at all. At because, all. At all, because I thought, you know, the, the idea was do these Morbi method deals and they're giant cash flow deals. So I don't need a wholesale. Wholesaling is for chumps. Uh, I'm just going to buy. Um, it wasn't until, you know, in January, things really started picking up steam. I met a couple of great people. I met my other partner, Gary. Um, Gary and I managed to, you know, raise money and, buy a bunch of houses and uh i think we've done looking at my board for reference i don't know 10 or 12 wraps so far this year oh, nice uh um, 12 wraps and in, some, in, something in the like span that. of like nine months that's pretty good that's pretty good it's like yes more than like one almost one per month yeah we haven't sold all of them yet i think we've sold about a little over half of them i think mm, yeah um but yeah it takes it, time it, yeah, but because of those wraps, and then we did a lease option as well in upstate New York. I mean, though that has brought me in, you know, a cash flow of you know once a couple more close, like close to fifteen hundred dollars a month from those wraps and that lease option. So, I mean, that's already that's already decent cash flow from. Bro, that's huge. That that right there is financial freedom. That's what most people want. And at twenty two years old, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we'll get to the good part because right now yeah. I have, I have nine deals in escrow right now. In escrow so, at the same time. Right now, at this Bro. very moment. Um, How are you so managing I, that? Like, especially uh, the holding costs. Like, tell me about that. Where are you getting the cash flow for the holding costs? So, five of those deals are wholesale deals. Oh. Okay. So, like, then you don't need to worry about the holding costs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to worry about the holding costs. Um, and the others? The others are wraps. they wraps. How, so, how are you so managing I, the holding costs for those? Um, a uh, com- combination of raising the money and um, kind of fronting it and then the hopes of being paid back with a down payment. My thought is if I have to leave a little bit of cash in the deal, my You'll cash on cash, my ca- yeah, I'll leave it because my cash on cash is going to be so high. Yeah. Um, I also, I did a deal with, uh, my dad actually funded it in Colleen, Texas. Nice. And uh, we sold it in like three weeks. I bought it from Kevin Cho. Shout out Kevin Cho. Um <laughs> nice. 2.9 percent rate 195 mortgage I borrowed 50 I borrowed 50 grand from my dad to fund that deal and uh um we sold it in three weeks and we sold it at 279 10 percent down um buyer pays all closing costs and uh eight percent interest eight yeah I was gonna ask that next question what was the interest for eight percent that's pretty man, that's really good and in so three like, weeks too that's quick so our cash flow on it's like a thousand bucks a month. Oh, sweet. So I went to, I told my dad, I was like, Hey, you know, you're getting, he's getting a 15% return annualized with his money. Nice. So That's how I you set like, it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, Hey man, you know, if you, I, I like to give people a sweet first deal and then I, yeah. you know, renege later on. Like I, I, I prefer to be 10 to 12 annualized and most mm-hmm. people are okay with that. But um, it's tough though right now, especially because of the interest rates, most people want, 14, 15 percent on the private lending side, even. So yeah. for you know private money partnerships, they kind of ask for the same thing. Roughly. Yeah. Do you see a lot so, of that too, or no? Yeah, we can get into <laughs> that at a later time. Um, but anyway, he was like, "Yeah, just leave my money in the deal. Me and Gary are cool. Cash flowing two hundred bucks a month each from it. But you know, nice. we get to keep the we get to keep a lot of money, pay out, pay ourselves back for a lot of the money that we're out, mm-hmm. and you know, make a little bit of profit from that, and still cash flow." So one deal, really one great deal, kind of, kind of recoups your losses from the not so great deals, yeah. In, in a yeah. sense, yeah. Um, like your whole portfolio balances out, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Usually the way I see it, when it you ba- have one it, bad deal, it balances out. Um, speaking of bad deals, we can get into the the one that I had the the trespassers in. We, we yeah, <laughs> we yeah. You were telling me about that before this. That yeah, you had, uh, squatters, right? Not <laughs> so squatters. How, squ- not Trespa- squatters. Trespassers. Trespassers. So you want to explain that? <laughs> I don't really know. I don't have much to explain about it, to be honest. There's, um, you know, we bought a house in Tampa. Probably mm-hmm. shouldn't have bought it. Um, we were trying to wholesale it, and it, we we had a buyer. The buyer didn't perform. We ended up closing on it. 
with an idea of what we wanted to do with it. And we wanted to turn it into a midterm rental. It didn't work nice. out that way. Uh, we're trying to wrap it now, but you know, we, we have a trespassing issue and we keep trying to get, we keep getting them out and they keep getting their way back in. So it's another lesson that I'm learning right now. Um, yeah. Geez, Are you thinking I'm about getting, it? I'm getting blown up right now with a million different people walking in, walking in and calling have, me. It's crazy. Have you, have you considered like hiring property management for Not that? For a wrap. Not for, yeah. Yeah. Especially because you're selling it. There's no reason for me. To, I don't have any property managers for wraps because I don't own the house anymore. Why do I have yeah. property managers? So I guess the only alternative is security cameras. That's the only option you have. You don't really have anything else. Maybe like getting extra security on the door, like bolting it or something. Well, let's right? get it involved. Why? Yeah, bolting it. Yeah. Let's get, let's get it involved. I think they're getting in through the window, to be honest. Um, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, you got to figure something out. But I'm sure you'll figure it out, right? And once the house is occupied, they, there shouldn't be trespassers anymore anyways. So, you, And at that point, you know, it's it's out of my hands. Yeah. Right? Is, it a, is it a C-class neighborhood or? I would say but it's probably below C-class, okay. which is why I shouldn't have bought the deal. It's, yeah. a, it's a rough area for sure. I mean, rough, worst, rough case, worst case scenario, you could, instead of selling it to an end buyer, you could try to assign it, right? Yeah, well, I'm in it for some money, so I'd have to be able to recoup some of that. Some I'd have of that to, yeah. I, I want to recoup all of the money. So yeah. my best case scenario right now is a wrap, and I don't want to – I'll leave it at that. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, but to go back into the whole, like, how I am where I am now, um, a few months ago, we decided to, you know, we were like, hey, we, we need to make some money actively. Because we have a lot of resources, we have yeah. a lot of assets, but we don't have any active income. And uh, I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> so, so we uh, we we have a team now. I'm our um, I'm our dispositions manager. So I take care of you know private money and uh, finding buyers and uh, performing exit strategies and finding wrap buyers and all that kind of stuff. Um, Nick Pedrick's our acquisitions manager. Um, okay. And you talk you've talked to all of us yeah. before. Uh, we have a team of. Uh, I think six callers now. We call low equity on market deals. All VAs, right? No, no, no VAs. No, no VAs. Zero VAs. Oh, all wow. of these, all of these people are in sub two. Our callers are all in sub two. Oh, they're nice. All, they're sub two students. Uh, they're 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 good. The VAs, they're, the quality of calls that they have are are really bad. And I I want to be able to help people become the closers that they want to become. And joining our team is it's a really good culture. Nick has a lot of trainings. He's really hands-on. He's a super helpful resource. And these people are making good, they're making good commission off the deals that they're doing. So um, it's a cool environment. It's a really cool thing to be a part of. Like yeah. right now, right now we've got, I think four or five deals in escrow, you know, almost 50 grand of volume. And we're only in the second month. And um, so you guys just started like two months ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. We've already done like eight deals. That's insane. <laughs> Getting a lot of traction, and yeah. uh, I mean, next this October, you know, forget it, man. We're probably gonna do ten deals. Um, so, are you guys looking to hire more closers? Like, how are you, how are you guys organizing that? Ask Nick. I don't know yet. <laughs> you know, we're pulling we're pulling a lot of lists. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, my other partner, he's you know our kind of uh, admin person, our TC, so to speak. Uh, he handles a lot of the stuff to do with you know files and contracts. He scrubs lists uh and uh make sure like when he pulls a list from privy he makes sure that their their equity is low and their interest rates low enough so that you nice. know these people are pre-vetted so we're not wasting our time calling you know bad leads yeah oh so that's something he does uh he does all he basically everything that me and nick don't want to do is visionaries he he does as an integrator so okay that makes uh, sense so that's kind of the dynamic we're, we're running with, and uh, it's 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 working very well. It's working amazingly well. Congrats, and, man. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> we're, we're doing a little bit of uh, – so we have that component of acquisitions, and then we have the JV component of acquisitions, mm -hmm. and we kind of launched that like three weeks ago, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more. And uh, we have another, another guy. His name is also Nick. He's in sub two. Um, he basically, you know, he's got a job. He wants to get out of his job. And um, he's the most, one of the most driven people I ever met. 
And basically what he does is he goes through like elephant challenge and different kinds of groups and stuff and looks for people who need help, who need a JV or, or like they need help contracting something or they don't mm. know what to do with the contract or whatever. He, he, he puts them on my schedule. We have an onboarding call and then we basically figure out how we can help. And for that, he makes a commission. And uh, yesterday we, we did our first deal using that method that, you know, we we're going to get a nice assignment fee for it's a sub two deal. And uh, we, the thing about that is it creates like a, sh like that buyer. Once I yeah. work with well, that JV partner, once I work yeah. with them one time, they're going to continue to bring more and more deals. Yeah. So yeah. once you build that, like first, like real, like relationship or bond through a transaction, then you just keep working at it again and again, because you built something there. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's super like rewarding too, like to tell, to help people out like that need help in whatever position they're in. Like there, mm -hmm. there's a lot of good people out there that can, that need, that need help. And yeah. uh, we want to be able to provide that value to be that resource for them that they can go to for that help. And I think thus far we're still building our systems, but I think we're doing a pretty good job of doing that. So I mean, three weeks, whatever it is, to get your first deal using that method, like, it, and and it's a good deal. Yeah. Um, that feels really good. Man, I feel like there's a lot to dig into here in terms of like working together as a team. How how did you identify that you were going to work on dispos and he was going to work on like you know some some of the other aspects? How did you even divide that up? Um. I don't even know, man. Did you just he, take a guess? <laughs> no, no. Nick, Nick was, you know, he's, he's good at, he's good at acquisitions. Not that I can't do acquisitions, yeah. but he was really excited about acquisitions. Got it. Um, he has Mike, a passion for it. He has a passion for it. Mike was, he's Mike, he has access. He does all the bank stuff. He does all the taxes. He does all of that. Like yeah. Nick, does, Nick doesn't even like log into the bank accounts. It's crazy. Yeah. He's a TC too, right? Or no? Not anymore. not anymore. He's not a T he's not a TC anymore. Um because he wanted to go full time into what we're doing now. It makes um sense. and then my and then me, um at the time I was, you know, doing I was raising a lot of money for my raps, um, finding my own buyers for deals that I was doing and whatever. And um it just it was a role that fit me really well because it just did. I just kind of fell into it and it's been really working out and I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. So that's awesome, man. So yeah. you said you were raising a lot of money. What was like some of the, you know, taxes you were using to raise money? Were you, was it just friends and family that you were going after? No, I raised email lists? a lot of money that I raised were from like people in sub two, nice. um, mostly rap deals and stuff like that. Um, were they wholesale deals like uh, for EMD money or were they actually like uh, for JVs on the wholesale deals? I mean, no, the, like, uh, wraps. like when I would buy my own deals to wrap them. Nice. So you got so, uh, sub to like private money, like partnerships within the sub so they, community. They would fund the entry. Nice. Um, and then how did you divide that up? Was it like 80, 80, 20, 60, 40 or? No, it was just, you know, in interest return, like a three or six month interest return on their money. Nice. And then uh, what I did was I would have like, I, I found a couple of people who have a lot of money that they want to deploy places mm -hmm. and whatnot. And uh, what they would do is if there was a gap between what I owed the lender and what down payments I was getting, I could bridge that gap with like 10 to 15% interest that would stay in the deal long term. Uh, I get it. That's smart. That makes sense. So you basically the way you ask for the money is, you know, like let's say you need 30 grand, you're just telling them, hey, I'm going to get this much back from like the, the down payment so I can give you this much back or whatever is the balance is what I really need to owe you. So it's yeah. probably like an even smaller portion, like five or 10 grand. So that's not really hard to pitch. That's pretty smart. Yeah, it's worked out really well. I've gotten a lot of people, a good amount of people, um, pretty decent returns that way, and it's pretty cool. Um, but, but yeah, man, that's that's kind of what I was doing. I also I also formed a couple of like equity partnerships to fund different deals. Like I'm doing a pad split right now in San Antonio. Oh yeah, man, I feel like you're doing a lot. <laughs> you're jumping all over the place. You, know, you got your business that you have with your friend and then you have like the wholesale deals that are coming in through that. And then you got your own, the 19 unit building and then you also have pad splits now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm doing a lot too, man. It's exhausting, so, but uh, it's super fun. 
But where have you seen the highest return? Probably in the. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wholesaling, wholesaling right? Wholesaling by a, a mile. A mile. Um, I've done in the past two months. By the end of the by the end of this month, over the course of the last three months, I will probably ten to twelve wholesale deals. I don't even know how much money that is for myself personally because I did a couple of deals on my own, um, and that's kind of how I fell into the dispo role. Man, that's got to easily be at least like sixty k to hundred k ish range, just for like just like the number of deals you've done. You Something know what like I mean? that. or more it has to be like around that range but that's 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 good man especially for, since you only joined sub two like last year it's only been yeah. about a year right year and so, a half yeah okay yeah a year and a half man that's See, really but, good but this is what i have mike for i have mike to tell me how much money i made you know ah, you don't have to worry about that <laughs> i don't have to worry about that hey mike nice. how much money did i make oh i made that <laughs> perfect thanks bro okay what am i getting into my checking account awesome thank you <laughs> I don't have to think about it. I don't have to. I just, you know, focus. My biggest thing, and I want to leave, I not leave, but I want to, I want to emphasize this is you got to stop doing things that don't, or find a way to delegate or stop doing things that don't make you money. Like yeah. today, like today, like I, I, I was aggravated a lot of the day because there was, I spent probably four hours on things that weren't directly making me money when I have a wholesale deal in my pipeline right now that I should be working on dispoing because it's going to make me money right now directly. It directly affects my bottom line. Dealing with like the, the issue in the, the Tampa house with the trespassers, I had a, a title issue that was a circus today for a closing that I have coming up with what, that rap I told you about earlier. Yeah. Um, that um my air condition broke in my uh my pad split and i had Man. a finance i had a finance a twelve thousand dollar air condition that alone that alone took me like four four hours today and all it all it did was drain my time and um stuff like that just really aggravates me so i'm always looking for ways, ways to delegate ways to delegate um just because I need to focus on this one thing. What what's going to make me money? Two things, three things: raising capital, mm -hmm. finding buyers for my contracts, finding wrap buyers for my wrap deals. Those are three things I need to be focused on to make money. And That's when it. I when I deviate from that, it really bothers me. Yeah, I'm sure you'll figure it out, man. The way you're like the trajectory that you're on already, you know, you've already have a small business that you're a part of. So the next step is to hire and delegate tasks as you move up. So it should just fall into place slowly as long as you keep pushing. That's what I think. Talk, yeah, I agree. Do you <laughs> want to talk about? Do you want to talk about your deal that you bought for me? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it, I, I like the deal. It's pretty good because the thing I, I liked about it is because like I was looking through like the Facebook <clears throat> community and all the deals I was see, seeing, they had the sub to mortgage balance, but they also had a seller carry back, and this was a problem. I wanted a big spread between um, the remaining mortgage balance. And then what did the lowest amount of worst case scenario ARV, ARV that I could sell it for. I wanted a spread between that and I couldn't find that in the majority of the deals. And I was having a hard time because for some reason, even though like a lot of these homes were like foreclosure deals, people tack on a like, cash to seller or people tack on, not, not for arrears, but just cash to seller or people will tack on a seller carry back. And I didn't understand like how they were, they negotiated that. I didn't understand that pain point. I'll like, tell you. Yeah, go ahead. I'll tell you a lot of people get deals under contract because they just give sellers exactly what they want. And oh. that's a problem because when people give a seller exactly what you want, they have a very hard time selling the deal. And then the seller gets upset that the deal is not being bought. Yeah. And then they get back out during their inspection. And now the seller has a bad taste with creative finance in their mouth and it all falls apart. So, I mean, that's happened to us recently. Where we yeah. got under undercut by somebody who is who offers the world, and um, you know it's just it's just super it's super frustrating because we're trying to help the sellers in a realistic way yeah. get out of their situation, and a lot of people are just contract to contract deals, and we're trying to I get so the feedback that I've been getting from everybody is our deals are amazing, and yeah. our deals are amazing because 
we make sure that there are deals before I contract. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I noticed that immediately because even though like, like the way it's advertised is the best case scenario always, right? But then what I try to do is I try to look at the worst case scenario. So I'm like, okay, if the best case scenario is like 320, what's the worst case scenario? What's the lowest house that sold? Okay, the lowest house that sold was 295, right? So let's just say 285 because I wanted, I wanted a quick sale. So even at that price range, like my biggest thing is like, I'm looking at three things, right? Cause the way I set it up is a little bit different. I have a money partner, right? So just like how you kind of, you know, got money from your dad, it's the same kind of situation. I give them like 15% return as well, but until they get all their money back, right? So on the front end, I pay myself a small, uh, hole, like a fee through the holding company that I have, not, not an assignment fee on the deal itself, but through the holding company I have just for doing all this work and so on, blah, blah, blah. And I get it and I want to make sure, okay, with all the money that's going in, like on the exit, will I still get all the money back? I'm not talking about the down payment. So if the entry fee is 30K and then I'm charging 5K, that's 35K. What's the spread? Okay, 224 minus like 25 is like 60 something. That's amazing. That's, that's the deal right there, right? Big, like, yes, there's the interest rate, but as, if I can, like, you know, because if I get refinanced out, then what am I going to do? I, like, you know what I mean? And I didn't get all the money back yet. Like, let's say, hypothetically speaking, in a situation where, um, you know, I do this rap deal and then I, I like, you know, and then the, the sell, uh, there, there's an end buyer, they come, 8% interest, great. Everything's done. Two months later, they sell the house. And, I, and, and they put down only like, I don't know, 5%. Now I'm at a loss. That's a risk that I don't want to take. So I'm always looking at every deal. That entry fee, am I getting that between the two spreads plus my own cost? If I am, then I, there, there is almost, like the amount of risk is so small. The only risk you're really looking at is, okay, whether you get a do on sale clause. And if you are, I, you know, that's, that's a totally different situation, totally different type of, you know, uh, how you deal with that scenario is different. So this is how I structure deals and how I look at it. But man, <laughs> a lot of the times, every deal I see, it's not, it's not good. It's not worth it. So I just don't even go for it. But yeah, entry fee has to like match or be uh, way less than the spread between the two notes plus, plus my own fee. And then typically speaking, I want more than a 15% return. So then they get it's more enticing for the private money partner. Otherwise they're just better off going and doing private lending. Why would they do this over private lending? Right. So it has to be a little bit better and also enough. So I can also get small amount of cash flow because after they get all their money back, because, you know, I'll get the down payment from the end buyer and I'll give some of that to the private money partner and then whatever is remaining, we'll keep, it will do an 80, 20 split until they get all their money back. Once they get it back, then it's 50, 50. Mm. And that's when like my holding company is winning. Right. That's, that's how I have the whole thing set up, right? But man, it is so difficult to find deals where there is that huge spread. Usually it's no equity deals or there's a huge seller carry back. I'm like, uh, but that's what I'm working on. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, the thing about wraps is that, you know, I, you increase the value that you sell it for by 10, 15% and create your own spread. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I've done that a handful of times. I bought a, I had a deal in uh, Tampa. We had a mortgage balance two ninety six at two point seven five. Yeah, I was we were forty into it, and uh, I ended up selling it for four hundred grand. It was not worth four hundred grand. How? So, <laughs> that's amazing. You saw that? That's, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah, four hundred grand, fifty grand down. So we were cashed out seven and a half percent interest. We're cash flowing almost thirteen hundred dollars on the house. Nice, man. That's amazing. Like most of the deals that I've seen, they they're they cash flow like five hundred to like eight. I'm pretty conservative, and I I guess. Like, I don't want to spend too much on holding costs. So I try to do quicker sales at lower interest. But most of the deals I've seen are like between like four to six hundred dollar ranges. So to see anything over a thousand dollars, man, that's impressive. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to find more of those, but they, they seem to be a little bit difficult. I feel like I'm in a situation where either I got to start getting on the phones myself <laughs> or like figure out a different type of avenue to try to get more deals, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you don't necessarily have to get on the phone yourself. Yeah, I don't I mean, want to. I, <laughs> And then, then don't, then don't yeah. find, find it, find a Nick like I did. I mean, I, I could, I could get on the phone myself. I have closed deals on the phone myself before, but do I, do I like it? Does it make me excited to wake up in the morning and get ready to work? Not really. Yeah. Not really. So I rather do this kind of stuff that I'm doing now. I'd rather do like podcast stuff. Like me and Nick wants me to work on our social media. So that yeah. know, I, took, I took on that role and I took over like the JV role. Because the, technically that's like dispo. Yeah, it um, is. So I took over that role and I, I just have so much going on right now that I enjoy a lot. So um, that's kind of where I'm at, man. But you know, to go back to the deal that I sold you for a second, 
the reason why I sold the deal to you was because you impressed me a lot by <laughs> How so? your, by your like tenacity, man. Like you were so persistent. You were like, I was like, ah, this guy's a newbie. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He doesn't have the money. But you asked you asked the right questions, and you you everything that I told you you needed to do, you did it within twenty four hours. And you had a phone call with me, Nick, and Mike, and we had a heart to heart. And you know, we were like, you know what, we feel good about this guy. Let's let's work with him and see where it goes. And now you're going to be like the first person to get my deals that I wholesale in Texas. I appreciate it, man. I really appreciate it. You already know what I want and what my requirements are. So yeah, <laughs> you know I mean, the only the only the only part that's the only part for you that sucks is San Antonio is my main purchasing market for my own properties. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's because it's good. That's why, but that's okay. It's because it's really good that area. You know, it, it, everything just works out. They have a huge culture for like seller financing too right a lot of people there just do owner to owner so it's 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 where a lot of people want to be right yeah yeah especially like spent... canadians man like a lot of canadians here because those are my private money partners right and uh, the market here is really sucks <laughs> right so getting into wraps and, and things like that is amazing yeah i don't know what you're doing up there still man it's time to move to texas <laughs> yeah tell me about it you're in new um... york how do you you're in new york right are you gonna move yeah. out there or what that's just, yeah, I'm going to, I, I want to move to Florida. I think I, yeah. I don't know anymore, man. I just spent a week in San Antonio checking out. I have 30 doors over there. Nice. And, uh, I was just checking it out and I was like, man, this place is cool. Yeah. It's, I, big I houses. It's nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I still have yet to go and make a visit. So I'm probably going to take a visit in the summertime. Well, I told you I was right. I wanted to go to your Von Orme house, but it was a little bit yeah. out of the way. And you said, don't worry about it. And by the time you answered me, I was already in like New Braunfels, which yeah. is an hour away. I was uh, like, okay. So, it's all good. But yeah, but, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Like, I know we're running out of time. I got a timer here. <laughs> so, man, I really appreciate the fact that you even, you know, took the time out of your day to hop on a call with me. So thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Is there anything that you want to say before you go? Um, I think, I think the thing that people do a lot, especially – you know, in sub two is that when you join, and I think Pace says this, you have so much like opportunity and so many things you could jump into and so many different things. And I, people are asking me like, are you doing the zero? What's the challenge now called? Yeah. The zero down. The zero like, down challenge. The business. Yeah. To and buy like, businesses. like, that's amazing. Like that is amazing yeah. stuff. But like, I am so ultra focused right now on wholesaling and acquiring for my own portfolio. Like right now I'm looking at San Antonio, Victoria and Corpus, that triangle for yeah. long-term rentals and section eights, the Midwest for more uh, long-term rentals and section eights and Florida for wraps. Those are the nice. three things that I'm looking to buy. And then I'm wholesaling. Those two things take up all of my time, energy yeah. and attention. If I were to divert that for a shiny object or something else, I would not be getting the traction that I'm getting. So the biggest thing that I would say is just if you're going to be the zero down, go for businesses, just just go at it. Just do that. Yeah. If you're going to be a gator, just do that. Just just pick one thing and get good at it before you jump to a million different things. And I remember when I first joined Sub2 that Pace said, you know, and other people said um, the most the oh, Sub2 is amazing, but there's so much resources that you literally get overwhelmed by the yeah. amount of content that you can consume. So I mean, the the only Zoom that I have attended in the last like six months was the one on pad split. And what did I do right after I I went to the Zoom on pad split? You got I, I bought a pad split. Yeah. So the biggest takeaway is learn and then apply what you learn so you can process it and 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 just focus. And, and the more you can focus, the better you're going to be able to hone in on your skills. And the better you're going to get, the more money you're going to make, the better people you're going to meet. And just that, that's it. Just, just stay focused and narrow your path. That's it. Man, that I 100% agree with you. That's a great message too. Just focus on one thing and that one thing alone and you'll grow. And then afterwards, you can worry about moving on to something else. Read but, read the uh, the One Thing by Gary Keller. By Gary yeah. Keller? I'm a reader. Man. <laughs> I'm gonna add it to my book list right now. I love books. I read all the time. So yeah, I'm looking at it right book. now. It's over there. Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. That's the whole message of the book. Yeah, the right. Whole message of the book. And like I read that book 
like four months ago and I've embraced one thing and like the results speak for itself. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Dominic. I really appreciate everything. And uh, I guess uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah, anytime, brother. Thank you.